Now that your needle is threaded and ready to go, let's start with the most basic stitch, a running stitch. Inside of your baggie, there were small pieces of paper, and we're gonna use these for practicing our sewing on so that we save our fabric for our actual project. And you can sew on any type of paper. Notebook paper works, but it's a little bit floppy and thin, so it can tear, and those note cards are nice and thin. So to start with, we're going to go to wherever you wanna practice. I'm gonna come over to the side a little bit, and I'm just going to push my needle through. And then remember, I did not tie a knot to the eye of my needle, so I'm gonna pinch as I pull so that I don't pull my thread off of my needle. Okay, and then you can, just like you can run in any direction, you can do a running stitch in any direction. So I'm gonna start by going up. I don't wanna skip a, a whole big long piece, but I'm gonna keep them about a pinky's width apart. So you're gonna come up, push, and pull, 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 pull. And if it's helpful, if it's hard for you to visualize a straight line that you would sew, you can take your pencil and you can give yourself a little path to sew, maybe going up and then over and then back down. And I like to keep my sewing in one direction, so not flipping and flopping it, flipping and flopping it. So we're gonna start, my hand is gonna be underneath it, and I'm only flipping it so you can see it, and I'm gonna feel where the point of the needle is pressing. I can feel it's right there lined up with my thumb, so I'm gonna push, and because this is not a sharp needle, it's totally safe for me to push that against my finger. Pinch and pull. And you want to pull, 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 pull till it's flat on the back. And then keep going forward. Push. When you get it through the other side, you'll want to make sure you're pinching so you can not lose your thread. And I'm flipping mine a little bit so you can see it, but it's easier if you just keep your fabric, your piece of paper flat. So you're gonna feel for where that line is by pushing your needle up against till you can feel it on your thumb. Skipping about a pinky's width, push. And you wanna make sure that you have pulled it to your knot and that these pieces are flat. If you've been in Smithfield in the past, you might've heard me say, don't leave any noodles hanging down. Like I wouldn't wanna leave that like that. I'm gonna pull it till it's flat. And guys, that is how easy the running stitch is. So I am gonna get running and sew around here. You can get started sewing a running stitch on your paper. Don't worry about trying to make it into anything. This is just practice for you today. Okay, so I have sewn a running stitch down my paper and up my paper and over, and I'm done. When you finish a stitch and you're ready to switch off to something new, you'll need to tie a knot, but you don't want the knot to be on the front, so I've ended on the back. And a simple way to tie a knot on the back of one of your pieces is to take your needle Go underneath a loop that you already have, and that's going to make a big loop here for you. And then you can take your needle and come right back through that loop that you created, 
and pull it. And that will make a knot on the back of your work that will secure your piece right where it's at. Okay, I've got quite a bit of thread left here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off what I used. And this was practice. So this thread is still in pretty good condition. I could actually, because it was practice, I could cut my knots off. And if I knew that I wanted to use this blue thread for something else, then I could pull it out and save it for my project later this week. And then this can just go in the trash because that was just practice. The next video will show you how to do the back stitch.